And we're back with another Starbase, I guess I can't say update, Starbase Summary. This is going to be for September 11th through the 14th. Kicking it off with Ship 31 out at Massey's, doing some work down on the bottom. You can see they've got like uh, tarps on that crab stand down there. I guess they're trying to block some of the wind from some of the work they're doing out that way. Still don't have all the tiles on there. But here's test tank 16. It continues to be in uh, air quotes, I guess you could say, because we don't uh, know if that is the official name for it. We haven't caught a label that says test tank 16, but numbering the test tanks, 16 should be the next one in line, which is why we keep putting air quotes around it. I don't know if they're actually air quotes if you're not doing them with your fingers. But whatever, y'all know what I mean. There's that long-range shot of the production and launch sites. New there is the two towers you can see. And some power lines. Those power lines are actually overhead all the way out here, and then they go underground for the last couple miles to Starbase. I think, yeah, that's not where they go underground, but a bunch of birds. This looks like some egrets. I don't know if those are kettle egrets. they got some long necks on them. I just want to, like, stop and zoom in and get an up-close view of the bird so I can figure out what sort of bird it is, but... Not always possible. Looks like Jack was very interested in the production site here. That lift flying around the rocket garden. And more work over on Ship 30. Going in and out of the little access hatch there. We've seen him in and out of there for quite some time now. Looks like a handheld shot of the high bay, trying to peek back into the corners there to see what's going on. Tough to get some of the angles uh, in the back corners in different places. Those are usually better at night because it's lit up inside and then it's dark outside, right? This is the doorway to the star factory. I'm really curious what was going on with that red T handle in the corner there. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows what that was, but... Uh, that looks like the glass assembly jig, those big suction cups they use to hold up the glass while they attach to the building. You can see the Star Factory, which is on the left here, is completely connected to the office building, which is on the right. Still have a little bit of work to do to put on those glass planes. Like, here you go. Here's the glass lifting jig and a window being installed on the office building, it looks like. It's like vacuum suction cup things that grab onto the glass and let them pick it up like that. Huh. That's actually St. Jude Street. I hadn't seen that street sign out there yet, but uh, uh, I'm torn. Kind of cool that they have a St. Jude Street, but uh, also not particularly great that they renamed Weems Street into Memes Street. There's an entire thing about Weems Street, and some of the first people that sort of set up that area were named Weems, and so to sort of erase them from the street name is a bit of a bummer, but at least there's crabs. <laughs> Looks like the crabs got uh, Jack's attention here. Those little teeny tiny crabs, look at those. It's like crablings. I think it said hatchlings. I think hatchlings is more of like a Mirelurk thing, but whatever. Different universe. I think that rated a chuckle out of my wife. It did. Okay, cool. I'm surprised we didn't get any uh, footage of, like, a bird coming down to snack on these, because I think that's how the circle of life works. Uh, I'd also like a close-in shot of the crab, because then I could, like, image search for it and be like, oh, yeah, those are crabs that are this type of crab, and they have this sort of life cycle, but I... <laughs> Shots were too zoomed out for me to really get any more information. The Frankensticks continue here. I have to imagine that they're going to paint those rusty segments. It just gets rusty so fast, but they're going to need to sort of grind that down and then uh, paint it again, hopefully to make it look a little bit better than that because that's a little dirty looking. Anyways. Still working on the carriages as well. Are we around the carriage stops? It looks like it might have an additional... Thing on the sides of the rails there. We were looking for the... Uh, it looks like they put in some reinforcements to keep the the, hop the chopstick tracks, I guess the skates, from hopping off the rails. Because it's going to be an awful lot of force 
when it goes from just sort of hanging there to having a rocket hanging with it, like catching the rocket. A lot of work on the booster QD hood. Looks like they're painting the top of it. Or proper terminology is probably coating the top and top of it there. But on to the next day with a beautiful time lapse from Mary at the reflecting pool over here. You got to get up early to catch these, and uh, that's why there's always, almost always, Mary's name down there next to those fantastic sunrise shots. Catching some work on the chopsticks as well. A lot of you pointed out it's it's not multiple cables. I think in the previous video I said, oh yeah, the cables can slap against each other, and technically it's just one cable that goes around and around and around right okay fine that is technically correct which is the very best kind of correct but the the important point was that the cable could slap against itself causing additional wear but you're you're technically correct that it's one long cable that goes up and down again <laughs> i i do read the comments like i appreciate the comments and i don't feel too terribly bad when y'all correct things like that More detail on the carriage. I wonder what, that's a grinder, maybe? That looks like a grinder. Yeah, I think I saw the wheel on the grinder. It wasn't a welder. You never know if they're cutting, like a cutting torch throws sparks sometimes, or a grinder throws sparks sometimes. But if you watch, you can sort of see how the sparks are being thrown and sort of determine if it's a if it's cutting or grinding. That, it's like a rusty stick they have on the crane. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. <laughs> But it's an interesting rusty stick. Okay. It's being moved over. It'll go okay, down a little bit, up a little bit. Around the back side. It's, it's like they're learning to tie their shoelaces or something. Yeah, okay. The, the rabbit goes around the tree. And then into the... Nope, not going to go in the hole. Well, that shoe's not going to stay tied. It's some sort of brace or something they're adding? I'm very curious. So if anybody has any ideas what this rusty stick they're adding <laughs> to the side of the chopsticks is, I'm all ears. Um, it's not obvious to me what that was. There is Starhopper with a temporary reflecting pool. There's normally not water here. But when the storm comes through, right, uh, it was Francine, it was a tropical storm while it was next to Starbase, and then it went up the coast, became a hurricane. But normally there's not water there, but a little temporary reflecting pool for Starlock, Starhopper's new home. And in the background there, a Starlink loader box is what you're looking at. You can sort of see the slot there that would have Starlinks stuffed inside of it. I've been watching that for a while. What is going on here? It's very shiny. It says Ad Astra. That's the back of a truck, maybe? All right, I don't know what that was, and it wasn't labeled, but I don't know if it was the back of a semi-truck or what. More shots from Mary of the... This is going to be the front of the production site, sort of this orientation. The launch pad is behind you. And popping back over to the Star Factory entrance, where they're putting more of that uh, glass on the front. And a sweeper. Just... Either cleaning up fodder or making fodder. I don't know which one those things do. They're just moving fodder around, maybe. <laughs> Another shot. You can see the rocket garden there. So this is towards Brownsville on Highway 4. Uh, behind you is Brownsville. Towards you here, of course, there's the production site, and then the launch site would be off to the, the right-hand side of that frame. Then over to the moat around Massey's. I'm almost positive that this little this water you see here, if you look at it on a map, it used to be uh, like an oxbow that was cut through by the Rio Grande. It, it really looks like that shape. I don't know that it was intentionally made or not, like the exact history, but it really does look like an oxbow that got cut through. But back to the air quotes, uh, Test Tank 16 here, with the, you could say new and improved, the more complicated crush structure there. And you can see both of those things in this shot. On the lower right-hand side, you can see the crust structure. And we've got the left... Did I say right-hand side? Left-hand side? Whichever. There's a ship there, too. Good grief. Interesting to see if we get a static fire. We've seen some testing happen that hasn't quite progressed to a static fire. But more air quotes around Test Tank 16. 
be really tough to see this testing actually happen. We've seen it happen where we saw sort of tension from a, a distance, but this new rig, I don't know unless something, I guess you could say catastrophic happens. Did that worker just give us a sign? Wait, is it, I don't know if that worker was like waving at somebody below or waving at Mary or making a heart. You'd have to rewind to see <laughs> what y'all's opinions are on whether or not that worker was signaling us here. But just a lot of detail shots around the base of the can crusher. Oh, it's Jack. We're driving. This is sped up. Jack always drives safely. But that was from Massey's and then turning around and driving up Highway 4. Look at the power lines. They went underground right there. Now they're underground. There's the production site. Oh, we pulled over right there. We almost need to, like, when you get to the end of that, we need to, like, slow down so you can see where we were. Are those, like, normal doors they put in there? They just look like boring normal doors. There's the vents installed in Mega Bay 2. I wonder if this is for airflow or building pressurization. An uh, interesting thing about the VAB down at KSC, say that 10 times fast, is they have blowout panels on the VAB, and the, the, the thinking is that if they have a sudden pressure change, like a, like a hurricane is coming through, the entire building doesn't pressurize. These blowout panels come out first so that it can equalize the internal and external pressure to prevent it from having uh, uncontrolled damage. I don't know that that's what's going on here. Like these could be ducting for air conditioners or coolers or something like that inside the building or just fans or something. But uh, when you have a huge structure like that, you want to make sure that it can equalize its pressure with the outside, right? So potentially those pass-throughs are to help keep that pressure equal. It's a bird. That is a laughing gull on top of the nose cone there. I am not going to try to make the noise that that bird makes, but they are very distinctive. They sound like they're laughing. You've probably heard it. If you hear somebody that sounds like they're hysterically laughing on the, uh, the daily ambient, which you can still get to by changing the audio track, you might be hearing the laughing gulls. It's like a super distinctive call, if you can even call it that. So you can see on top of the OLM, there's a guy with a long stick, a worker with a long stick there, coating the top. There you go. We zoomed in a little bit. I'm going to call it coating the top of the OLM. It's like a ship, like right there next to the ocean. You're constantly having to do these things, especially when you hit it with rocket exhaust. But still, the, the lifts attending to work on the chopsticks. They've been doing this for quite a while. A lot of progress, I guess you could say, but they're not done yet. I'm going to imagine that these things are, are super clean looking before the flight actually occurs. Oh, it's another random stick. Let's see if we can see what they actually do with this random rusty stick this time. All right. The guy's like waving as to where it's supposed to go, like a little, little, little. Looking up, looking down. I think he clapped at the end. We're going to go and get it with the lift. Okay, up, down. It's going all the way down the side. It looks like an extension. So is that a is that a reinforcement or is that like a raceway of some sort that's going to connect uh, or protect cables or something? I really do wonder. It, it really does look like it might be a raceway. I don't know. I, d I don't know how that piece of equipment could stabilize that structure. It doesn't really look like it could. But if there's welders out there, anybody that actually knows, let me know. Again, I just watch these things. It's not like I, I can tell you exactly what's happening and everything. But, I, hey, somebody in chat may know. So let us know what you think that was. Looks like we're going to get a gratuitous tilt. I got it right that time for Jack down Tower B at pad two but is it really pa like tower b because there's one at ksc and was that b and is should this actually be c or is this tower three or does this let's just not even go there it's labeled tower b for now i think we got that from uh environmental documents oh jack's driving again 
We're going up the beach. Got some trash cans on the side. There's the concrete. Looks like they've scraped it out after the storm. Dodge the truck. Click out a three. If you know, you know. Back all the way over at uh, Massey's. It's a little bit of venting, but sometimes this is just like maintenance venting or testing. I don't know here if we're going to see any ice form on the vehicle. We've been chasing that for a while, trying to see that testing, but I don't know that we've seen that happen yet. In any event, that's going to be our Starbase summary. That's me up at the top, John Galloway. You can call me DOS, that's fine. Thanks to Mary and Jack out there in the field and all the SBL ops who help us capture all this stuff. And we'll see you nerds later.